You know, metal additive manufacturing, it's an amazing technology which has tremendous future applications for manufacturing. But if there's ever been one knock about it, it's that you can't make large parts. Now I'm with James Hockey, he's Director of Business Development for Encodema. And Jim, we're standing next to a monster of a metal additive manufactured part. Now you built this, tell me how. Yes, well we used the, uh, the EOS M400 machine, uh, single laser. Uh, it's a 16 by 16 by 16 inch build platform and we used this part here and uh, designed it and stretched it out so that we could maximize that build platform and show exactly how large a part you can actually build in this. So this is aluminum. Um, this part probably weighs about the 12 to 13 pound area uh, after, after being built. Very lightweight and solid, fully dense off the, off the, off the plate, but uh, as you can see inside it is, it is hollow. Now it's um, it's it's historically thought of as an expensive way to make things because you're using expensive raw material to begin with and an expensive process at the same time. But obviously, if you're lightweight, you're also using less material at the same time. So, is can you, how much can you of that cost can you win back? Is is the cost in time to market? Is in lightweighting? Is it using less material? Uh, cost is in the build hours. I mean, the, the layer process, the Z kind of drives the pricing. Uh, but again, you're building near net shape, so you're not using as much material. You're not buying a block of Inconel or a block of titanium and machining down and wasting a bunch of material. So you're doing finished machining, fine tune machining, very little parts uh, or very little material is wasted. Now, do your customers, do they, uh, do they know, do they optimize the design for additive or are they bringing you parts which are regularly designed for subtractive and saying, please 3D print this? In a lot of ways, they're bringing us parts that are already being designed for conventional. Um, they are now redesigning parts uh, for additive. So they are building parts with uh, things of the structure where you're changing the whole shape so that you can build these parts in the layer process as opposed to trying to uh, do any uh, secondaries afterwards. Now, this is aluminum. It, uh, what sorts of materials typically do you work with at Encodema? Uh, Inconel, stainless steel, titanium, cobalt chrome, uh, Hastelloy, uh, many, many different materials. Okay, those materials you described, some are refractory. Uh, you mentioned some super alloys in there. Uh, you also mentioned some products, I think, of some uh, medical applications, for example. But is aerospace, would that be a major market? Aerospace is our major market, yeah. We are 95% we are aerospace uh, focused. Now, it's in aerospace, of course, it's um, uh, engines in particular. Expensive. The hot section is really expensive. A lot of investment casting. You know, yes. a lot of a lot of tricky stuff, and then you get a lot of post machining at the same time. Is this technology going to work its way into the hot section? Are we going to see, uh, um, you know, fully dense sort of Inconel turbine blades on a mass production basis? We are, and and they are there. So we are doing parts right now where we actually have parts test fired by NASA, uh, test fired by uh, companies like Aerojet, um, for you know, with the technology using the uh, the alloys that you've discussed. Uh, but aerospace is grabbing this because it's, it's, it is difficult to make a lot of these parts in casting uh, or anything that's an assembly. So once they get into multiple pieces and they're doing raised welding, um, ultrasonic welding, they want to avoid that and get away from that redesign and use additive so they can build these parts wholly, you know, holistically in one piece. Now in terms of surface finish, historically we're used to, uh, when you get to very large 3D printed parts, giving away something in terms of surface finish, but this surface is actually it's actually very uniform all the way across. I'm a little surprised to see that. Is, it, uh, is, is this the future? Are we looking at, at finer and finer surface finish? You will be looking at finer and finer surface finishes, so the process of the melt pool, uh, the material itself, the different granule size that we get in, uh, and the amount of power we put into the build, into the layers, will change that size and the resolution. Large, precise, and accurate parts with a good surface finish, says James Hockey from Encodema.